Hello, wait, this lighting is awful. That's better. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Hugo, and welcome to an updated bookshelf tour. I did a bookshelf tour, but it was together with like, um, what it, what's it called? Like bookshelf reorganization. And it was a very long video. So I'm hoping I can keep this shorter. It's also updated. Obviously, I got a lot of new books with that. Um, they're over there. I won't show my DVDs. I'll go over like very fast uh, because most of you probably aren't really interested in DVDs. I'm not that interested in DVDs. I just own a lot. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the bookshelf tour. So first thing I would like just show real quick is like my stereo, which I have had for like 10 years. And it's like my Lost of Us 2 statue, which I'm very happy. And these are like, um, not really encyclopedias, but I really love these. They're, they're I studied for a vet and they are like about animals and biology and stuff like that. Uh, but I think they look fucking gorgeous. Uh, and I kind of love this setup. But anyway, here we have my TV, uh, which you probably never see. But in my, t uh, like, what's, what's this called? My TV shelf, I have like old, like, Super Nintendo games. Like a lot of them I found in a thrift store for like 50 cents, which is insane because some of these are like worth like this one. This one is like worth 140 euros. Uh, and I found one in a thrift store for 50 cents. I have some DVDs over here with my two favorite TV shows ever, Lost and House. Sorry about the dust, that's disgusting. Here I have kind of a TBR, TBR shelf. Like I'll put some books here that I plan on reading very soon. There we have Winnie the Pooh, which is too tall to fit on any shelf. Uh, but yeah. So here we have Stephen King. Those are like different things. And this one is for like taller books because they don't fit in these shelves. Because literally this this is the tallest it gets in uh, like these bookshelves and like a hardcover wouldn't fit in here which is annoying because that is not big enough to fit my Stephen King anymore. So here's my DVD. Uh, I have like old box sets of VCR and then I have like here like animated DVDs. These are all Stephen King adaptations uh, which I almost have watched none of. Uh, but they came with like the big box of Stephen King books I got a few months ago. These are all books I'm gonna get rid of. Uh, here we have Spyro and Spyro, we have Ahsoka, we have DVDs, uh, we have some Blu-rays, Lord of the Rings in display, we have oh, like this, we have some like steel cases which I really like always, I have some here too. Uh, what's this then? Oh, I wanted to watch that one. And then here we have some more movies and we have Zuko, Aang is sleeping, and then we have Korra and Aang. Anywho, you're here for the books. So, starting here, I hope the, cab the camera is a bit stable. You're on my tripod, so I hope. I know this doesn't really fit here and probably should be here. So we have some Lord of the Rings. Behind that are other DVDs. Uh, we have some Lord of the Rings, like smaller copies, but I really like these. Um, and like Tolkien stuff, we have the Ring Wrath and paperbacks. These are like like different kinds of things, like a uh, few comics too. Like we have Yamaka, which is amazing and sad that it's not an international thing because they are fucking great. These, I didn't know what to do with them. They're like small classic uh, things that I found in a thrift store. I love this. I've had this for 15 years, I think, and it's the best bookshelf decoration I have, and I have never seen better bookshelf decoration. So that is that. We have Lord of the Rings books. I have an old collection video about Lord of the Rings, about my Lord of the Rings books. Behind that are like more books, but probably not things I'm going to get too soon or like that's the last one in the Aragon series and the last one in Wheel of Time series, but I don't have any of the other books in that series. So that's like 
I'm not gonna get to these, but I'm not gonna get rid of them. But these shelves are like very deep, so it's nice to have two rows. Here we have my, uh, I don't know if it's Chinese, but like Asian inspired knives. And I just love how it looks. I don't know if I have a show, show, show this, but I think they're kind of great. Um, only used once. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then we have some fantasy, like smaller ones because they just fit here. Uh, we have Stormfront. We have the Witcher, which I DNF'd. What's this then? Sorry. We have the Narnia series, which I never read, but I picked these up used here in English and I was very happy with them. Because they, they look nice, right? I think they do. Uh, so I probably should get to these soon. These are like random copies of Song of Ice and Fire. I have three of them. I just found them in thrift store, as you can see, 70 cents. Yeah, couldn't just let them lay there for 70 cents. I mean, this is a random book, Dies of Fire, which is like post-apocalyptic, which I don't know where to put elsewhere. And we have a Neil Gaiman book, American Gods, which doesn't make sense that it's here, but it just didn't fit anymore on my Neil Gaiman shelves, which I'm going to now. Look at this transition though. We have Ocean at the End of the Lane. We have Trigger Warning, and I'm in love with this cover. We have American Gods again, but like a bigger paperback. But this one is in Dutch, so I probably will read that one. We have Norse Mythology. We have Neverwhere. We have Graveyard Book, Coraline, and fortunately The Milk in a box set. And we have Fragile Things, which is uh, like short stories. These are also short stories, by the way. And then behind this, I know it's a whole thing. We have David Gib Gibbons Atlantis, we have Irving Welsh Strain Spotting, we have Dean Koons Alt Thomas, we have a John Grisham book, we have Hugh Laurie, we have another John Grisham, Nicholas Evans, uh, Gone Girl, and The Girl in the Train. These are either books that I already read or that are not like high on the TBR list, so that's why I also put them more in the back. Then we go down here and we have mass markets or like smaller copies of like classics. I consider them classics anyway. I don't know if Richard Adams' uh, Watership Down is considered a classic. I read this as a kid and it seems cute, right? Uh, if you never read this, it's not as cute as you would imagine, but it's a very, I should reread it because I don't remember anything of the book. I remember the show vividly, like the animated show, uh, but it's kind of uh, horrifying. And we have Jane Austen's Persuasion, Catherine Wright, Thomas Hardy, Oscar Wilde, Conan Doyle, Bronte, Dickens, Jane Austen, Bronte again, but the other one. Uh, James Joyce, Oscar Wilde. These are all mostly like the Wordsworth classic, which I found in like thrift store or something. And I haven't read any of these except for uh, Watership Down. We have a boat, which makes sense if you see this book here, Old Man and the Sea, which I've read. And we have other Hemingways. And I love these copies. Uh, I found these in thrift stores as well. To have and have not, Green Hills of Africa, Across the River and Into the Sea, and Old Man the Sea. Then we have my old nemesis, which I struggled with, Brave New World. And we have one that I haven't read, but I really want to, 1984. I also just found this in a thrift store. Uh, and if I see an English, a classic English book in a thrift store, I'm probably going to get it. We have Isaac Asimov's Robot Dreams. That's, this is just on display because I really lo love this cover, but it doesn't fit on this shelf. But, uh, like, genre-wise, but I really like this cover. We have some Avatar comics, which is just a comic version of the TV show. Uh, we have, like, a movie uh, movie book, Dead Poet Society, uh, which I just 
I don't know why I love this copy so much. It's it's a movie cover, but I love it. Like it, it's the perfect size. I don't know. I just love it, and I'm not gonna get rid of it. We have Tim Parks, Rapids. We have Jan Martel, Mountains of the High Mountains of Portugal, Life of Pi, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. We have a Nicholas Sparks book, which is probably just something I will give to my mom if she wants it. Uh, we have Haruki Murakami, Blind Willow, Sleeping Women, which are short stories. I haven't read this yet. We have A Man Called Ovo. We have Sailor Who Fell From Grace With The Sea uh, from Yukio Mishima, it's like a Japanese author. Um, which I have I haven't read yet, but I heard really really good things, and he's one of Felix's, uh, aka PewDiePie's favorite authors, and he talks about it in high praise. So really want to read that one. We have Haruki Murakami, Kafka the Shore, which is very well written. I've talked about this before. But it's uh, a bit weird <laughs> at times. We have Hitman Anders and the Meaning of It All by. Um, Jonas Jonasson, we have Mark Haddon, The Red House, which is the same author, I think, from The Curious Incident, right? Of the Dog at Midtime, yeah, same author as this one, which is on my TBR show. We have Boy A uh, by Jonathan Triggle, we have Best of Me by Nicholas Sparks, and we have The Flanders Panel, which is about chess, I believe. And I found that in a thrift store as well. And it's an international bestseller and Flanders is the region where I live. So I'm curious what this is even about. So yeah, that's that. Then we go down here and we have more classics. These are all Jules Verne. Jules Verne. I have showed these before. This is like a very beautiful copy though. See. I don't know if there was supposed to be a dust jacket with this one, but I found this for 10 cents and I just love it. So that's why I own it. And then we have that old copy of Moby Dick, which I've shown before. Behind these are all Andy McNabb books, which I read when I was a teenager. Uh, but now not so much, like that's not something I would read right now. So they're in the back. We have my beautiful copy of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Here we have the 20 Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. We have Oliver Twist and David Copperfield, part two. Also found this for like 10 cents and it's like leather bound. I don't know if it's real leather. Like the quality isn't great anymore, but 10 cents, I mean, <laughs> hello. Uh, behind that are like children's versions of these classics. Uh, here is Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol, but I wanted to display a book here. So that's why it's like this. Sorry about these annoying fucking kids on my street, like Jesus Christ. We have Thomas Hardy, great novels, like an omnibus. We have a Dutch version of Moby Dick. We have Firma uh, or Furman uh, by Sam Savage or Sam Savage, which is like um, an homage to classic literature. But I love this, co love this cover. <laughs> uh, I haven't read it though. We have John Irving, uh, The Fourth Hand. I have no idea what it's about. We have Stephen Hawking, which is in here because it doesn't fit anywhere because it's a big book. Brief History of Time and Universe in a Nutshell, which is like a leather hardback or a leather bound or whatever. And we have an illust a deluxe illustrated version of the Da Vinci Code, which I've shown before. And then my beautiful copy of We Need a Pooh, which doesn't fit anywhere, which is annoying. Um, I'll probably, when I clean my desk out or something, I will probably put this on display on my desk. Here we have multiple medical books and animal books from when I was a vet and a nurse and whatever. I'm not gonna go into those because those are not interesting for anyone. <laughs> Here we have some old consoles. My old Wii, PlayStation 2, the European version, the PAL version of the Super Nintendo. And uh, we have the first Nintendo the NES, we have some N64 games and some gaming magazines. We have a random Harry Potter things 
that I found somewhere or got. I don't know how. Here we have a cool vintage dragon toy, which I think fitted well on my fancy shelf. Really, construction work right now. I, ho I, I hope you can't hear this. Anyway, I think this is pretty cool. Like, it's broken, but hello. We have stories of the Twilight Zone, which isn't about vampires, but it's about like the creepy stuff with like uh, multiple universe, multiple universes, and I don't know whatever. I haven't read this, but there that was like a big TV show. We have Stephen Donaldson's uh, trilogy, who translated The Lord of the Rings. I don't know if he's like well known or something. Oh, I'm sorry. We have Michael Scott's The Alchemist and the Magician, which is uh, part of a series, Nicholas Flamel. Uh, I haven't read these. All of these uh, Dutch ones, except for these, uh, I got from my sister because she wasn't going to read them anymore. Uh, Chris Wooding, the Sisters of Saramir series. Uh, yeah, kind of mainstream covered, but not the worst. And they're in very good condition, so I like them. But it's fantasy, I don't know what it's about. Then we have the Dwarfs, Dwarfs series, which is like a very big fantasy series here in Europe. The covers are basically just all the same <laughs> in a different color. Uh, and this is like a prequel about it, I think. So the same author. Uh, but they're very big in, I think it's a German author. Uh, very big here in Europe. And my sister loved it, but I never read them. And a co-worker of mine also loved them. But yeah, I, I never read them. I don't know if they're like well known in America. Oh, I skipped this one. We have David Eddings at the Elenium Trilogy. We have We Have the Warrior by Chris Bradford, which I just, I like the cover. I'll show it real quick. I like the cover and I found it in first, so I have no idea what it's about. I'm guessing a samurai. Then we have a Lord of the Rings box set, uh, which was first up there, but I wanted to clear that shelf for Neil Gaiman because this was there as well. I still, I'm, I'm still waiting on my shelf, on my uh, Final Empire book. But yeah, this is the Mistborn trilogy, obviously, in like the box set. Uh, it's a pretty box. Uh, I, I think if you want to buy the Mistborn trilogy, I think you should buy this box. Because it's pretty and it was, it was cheaper than when you would buy them separately, so. We have Dave Ev uh, Eggers' The Circle, which is about like social media and like them like not really leaving any privacy for anyone. Uh, we have James Dashner's The Eye of Minds, which is like the author of The Maze Runner. We have Alexandra Bracken's Passenger. Uh, she's the author of a book that's very popular around BookTube right now. I can't remember the title. Maybe I'll put a picture here somewhere. I did not like this book. This was very slow and way too detailed in the writing was like every wrinkle in the dress was described here. And yeah, I enjoyed the, not the main character, but the second main character. Um, the main character was very boring, Edda, but her love interest was kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, it's about time travel and also kind of pirates, but it's, it's kind of weird, but I, it makes sense if you read it, but yeah. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, but probably a lot of people would enjoy it. Then we have One Second After by William R. Fortier, which is like a giant EMP goes off and none, no electronics survive. And it's the life after that. I read like a bit of it, but then got in like a biggest reading slump. And I didn't finish it, but I was, I remember really liking it. So, well. Then we have a hardcover in English, which I found in a thrift store. And if I found a hardcover in a thrift store in English, I'm <laughs> gonna buy it no matter what it's about. Um, it's the author of Meg, uh, which is like about the shark, like Jaws-ish. And this is, it sounds like Michael Crichton, uh, which is like sci-fi techno thriller. Then we have James Rollins, Bloodline, 
again English hardcover in a thrift store I will buy it probably and I also really like the covers this is like Indiana Jones mixed with Uncharted I think but yeah if I find these hardcovers for like a euro 25 which is like a dollar uh, two dollars maybe then I will just buy them especially if I also like the cover then we have a sci-fi shelf or I don't know if you would consider Michael Crichton sci-fi some do it's its, it's its own genre they say uh, the control. but yeah we have two lo um, Jurassic Park books uh, yeah <laughs> I don't know where I got this but I found this in my house and I was like uh, this is mine now we have Michael Crichton's State of Fear, which is kind of controversial right now, but I found the hardcover in English and I love that cover, so I had to buy it. I haven't read it yet, but like, hello. Like, it's a bit worn, but I love this cover. And there he is, late Michael Crichton. Uh, if you don't know, he was also a doctor and he wrote ER, and this is like five short stories about five patients and cases and I love like house I never watch ER but I love like hospital series uh, so I think that's gonna be pretty cool we have Jurassic Park which I need to reread we have The Lost World because I, I only read it as a kid and I don't even remember finishing it um, so I need, really need to reread it we have Prey I, or is this called different in English Yeah, no, it's pretty, which I like. I like the cover now. I mean, sometimes these prices in thrift stores are like amazing. I, I just can't like leave them. Pirates, same thing. But yeah, I haven't read any Michael Crichton. I really should probably. I will fix this later. And we also have a disclosure, which is in English. Uh, yeah. Then we have the Day of the Dolphin by Robert Merle. Which is also a major mo motion picture, apparently. I've never read, uh, heard of it. But 70 cents. Uh, yeah, it's about the intelligence of dolphins, and I don't know what it's about, but it sounds cool. I don't know, I haven't read it, but it sounds cool. Then we have David Brin, Earth, and Heaven's Reach, which are like space operas, I believe. Uh, we have Cowl, Heel, uh, by Neil Asher. And we have The Departure by Neil Asher, uh, which is like leaving Earth and go live somewhere else. We have a cool Star Wars ship, I think, which I also found in the store. I buy a lot of my stuff in store. We have Leviathan Wakes, which needs no introduction. We have The Martian, which, need, which definitely needs no introduction on my channel. Normally, um, between these would be Project Hail Mary, but I'm reading that now. We have Blake Wright's Dark Matter. We have Terry Pratchett and Steve Baxter, The Long Cosmos, which is the last book in the Long Earth series. But I found this brand new in the FNAC, if you, if that is a well-known shop, I have no idea. But I found this brand new for like one euro. So I was like, you're coming with me. <laughs> and we have a Dutch version of The Martian, which is the movie cover. But I was like, I'll keep this. Then we have a Mass Effect trilogy book, which is like prequel. Cool which I haven't read, I haven't even played the games, but they were like 70 cents a piece. So then we have a whole Star Wars shelf, which I won't go into deep about. We have these Disney Infinity toys. We have, hello there, Obi-Wan. Uh, oh, uh, fucking Yoda, Jesus Christ, I couldn't think of it. We have Mando with Grogu. We have Ahsoka and Anakin. This is a trilogy. Uh, but I also have them separately, of course, because I'm a fucking lunatic. So it is episode one, episode two, Revenge of the Sith, and then the original trilogy in book in book form. I also have Light of the Jedi, which is like the newest one, and the Ahsoka novel. Uh, but yeah, I'll put this here.
Then we have classic, sorry if the lighting here is a bit uh, worse here. We have these black birds edition, which are fucking horrible. I hate this cover. This one isn't too bad. The collector, James Fowles, which I DNF'd, did not enjoy this. I was like halfway through, but was like, I don't care about any of you guys. Uh, then we have One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which I really want to read. Uh, but I mean, look at this cover, like how... I love creepy covers, but this is just bad. Uh, yeah, by Ken Casey or Casey or I don't know. I'm really hyped for it. I haven't watched a movie either with Jack Nicholson. And then we have Pride and Prejudice in another cover. Um, Jesus Christ, the fucking lighting. But yeah, I don't know what this cover is. Like, I have no idea. Is that like a real-time picture of someone? I don't know. It's ugly. Doesn't matter. Then we have Dostoevsky, The House of the Dead, uh, which is kind of non-fiction but also kind of fiction i have no idea it's about it's it's real it's it, it happened to him i think yeah he was sentenced to four years of hard labor and that's his story about it so but i haven't read it but i'm really want to we have crime and punishments war and peace um kind of monte cristo don quixote uh, great expectations Jack London's Call of the Wild and White Fang. We have Hamlet. We have Through the Looking Grass, Glass. Alice in Wonderland, The Secret Garden, which uh, my sister was obsessed with the movie. Uh, and I remember watching it, but I have no idea what it's about. Probably about the garden. That's it. Uh, but I want to read that, especially since it's so short. George Eliot, Daniel Deronda, which I have no idea what that is. We have Agatha Christie, Agatha Christie, Agatha Christie. Um, we have Edgar Allan Poe, the travel stories about of Arthur Gordon Pym, which is like his novel. Uh, we have Sophie's World, which is kind of an introduction to philosophy. We have First Man by Albert Camus, a famous French author. He, he also wrote The Plague, which was like very popular at the beginning of the pandemic obviously we have Hector Malo alone uh, uh, in the world which is about an orphan and we have just Sophie's world in Dutch in a cool hardcover which is like club then sorry this is a long video uh, we have an Aston Martin and we have an Evo we have some like action books we have I don't know why I have this many Tom Clancy books. We have Rainbow Six. Uh, we have. I'm not going to translate these titles, but yeah, they're like I, Jack Ryan books. Um, the show seems cool. I'm not sure if I get to this. I do want to get to this one. Which, this is like the first uh, Jack Reacher book. We have Wilbur Smith, an omnibus, um, which is also like thriller, action thriller. We have the 24 books. We have James Patterson's Zoo, which I want to get to because I watched the show, loved it, but it was cancelled. Uh, and I don't know how it, <laughs> how it fucking ends. So I want to read that. Uh, we have Lifeguards. Um, we have Trial. These are all Alex Ross thrillers and The Jester, all by Patterson. But not only by Patterson, let me check. Richard uh, DeLalo, too. So credit to who uh, to uh, to everyone we have max techmark life 3.0 we have bill gates the road ahead of us we have ewan mcgregor and charlie borman uh, long way round et i don't know where that it just didn't fit anywhere else so that's why it's there we have great speeches by roosevelt we have a steven spielberg unauthorized biography we have barack obama the audacity of hope we have Yuval Noah Harari, Homo Deus, someone has my copy of uh, Homo Sapiens. We have the Tao of Pooh and Day of Piglet. We have Aristotle Poetics. We have um, classic haiku, uh, classic tradition of haiku, which is like a Japanese form of poetry. We have The Ego and the Id by Sigmund Freud, Leviathan, Thomas Hobbes, Marcus Aurelius, uh, Meditations. Uh, Epictetus uh, discourses of 
Selected, uh, discourses and Selected Writings, Nietzsche, Human, Unto Human, and Beyond Good and Evil, and Nietzsche, the Antichrist. And then here we have Mad Search for Meaning, uh, The Origin of Species by Charles Darwin, some like little black penguin books. And these are like introductions to a lot of uh, like Aquino, like introduction to Aquino, introduction to Descartes is somewhere here, Montaigne, uh, things like that. These are like free at my college because they were like library books, uh, but they were updating their library, I guess. And they were like, take this, and no one was taking this, so I was like, I'm gonna I'm take them all. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then we have, of course, Stephen King shelf, but I will leave this one for a separate video. I'll go. Uh, so here are like duplicates and here I have some extra space which is for horror or suspense novels most of the time since it's like same shelf as same thing. I buy most of my um, most of my um, they say this is like worse than what I ship down. I buy most of my horror books uh, in ebook form but I want to get more like vintage horror books and they will get on this shelf. Yeah, we have Lisa Jackson, Lost Souls, Dan Simmons, Winter Haunting. Uh, he's the author of Hyperion and Dan Simmons, The Abominable and Room by Emma Donna, Donahue. Oh, so those were all my bookshelves, except for my Stephen King bookshelf, but I might do like a Stephen King bookshelf tour or whatever, since I just updated it. But I also have, um, well, it's not really up to date, but I have a Stephen King collection video that you can watch. But basically I have three videos, which if you watch them all, you see my whole Stephen King collection, but I will do a Stephen King bookshelf tour some time in the future. However, did you enjoy this? I know it was a longer video. I own quite a few books, so that's what happens then. Uh, sorry about my hair getting longer. I am going to the hairdresser next week. So <laughs> stay tuned, don't leave yet. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna leave this here. It's been long enough. Thank you for watching if you stayed this long. And yeah, uh, if you have a bookshelf tour video of your, on your own channel, let me know. I love watching book, 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 bookshelf tour videos. Uh, without further ado, my arm is getting tired of holding the camera. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave it here. Uh, thank you for watching. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.